So for this game, um, for this game it's full screen, so it's it's a bit difficult for me to switch between screens. So that's why I've got um, I've got two monitors. The first monitor monitor is taken up by my game, so I can't really do much. Um, I could um, shift tab, but then you'd see my uh, Steam account, and I'm shy. I don't want anyone to look at my Steam account. Um, on the right screen, we've got the OBS, we've got the Discord, and we've got like uh, web browser stuff open. So, yeah, we should be good here. We should be good. But I am going to. There it is. Good. Good, good, good. That's what I want. Alright, so that's telling me to start my game. So I'm just about to do. I just need to. I think I'm gonna pause this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and now we're going to get into the game proper. Uh, Primordia 2013, click and point adventure game. Um, I'm a little bit of the way into it. I've reached uh, Metropole, and I'm looking for the um, the psycho robot that stole my ship's power supply. Yeah. All right, so let's get into it. Oh, no. I didn't want that. Okay, load game. Hippie poo poo on my dad. Alright. So, here is the city of Metropole. Let me just check the audio levels. Okay, now I changed that... Boop. Sorry. I changed this when I was playing Narita Boy. Right, this, sh this should be okay. I need to adjust it to be exactly where I want it, but it's fine. I'll do that off stream. Who knew some place could be so lively and so depressing all at once? Right. So, um, you've got this busted ass robot here. This robot doesn't want to talk to me. Yeah, point and click. I'm thinking I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna announce it yet, but let's just say that um, on this channel there's gonna be some more click and point uh, games. Um, some might say classics of the genre. Classics which I have not had the privilege to play yet, so I'll be going to the blind. But yeah, I'm not quite ready to announce them yet. Like, I, I feel like I've got so many games that I haven't finished that are taking up slots in my rotation, so... Yeah, you can really... Like, that with with a um, point-and-click adventure game, they tell stories. And right now, like, lately, as I get older, I'm very interested in games that paint, like, um... Like... Imagination scapes, if you will. Like, big stories and, you know... Like, I'm getting a bit away from, like, the, the Twitch gameplay mechanics and more into story stuff. So. A new... Okay, well, if you're looking for a new point um, and click adventures, like, there, there is a ton. Um, one of my regulars, Lark is a spectator sport, he keeps suggesting that I play um, the Red String Club. Red Strings Club? I think that's what, he, what it's called. There's also, like, a different one, um, the cyberpunk bartending game, like Valhalla. Yeah. Those are apparently newish, like not this year, but yeah. So at some point I'll get access to his Steam library and talk, see if I will stream them. But yeah. Okay, so at the moment, got all this stuff here. The right. entire thing is fried. Yeah, Actually, what? wait a minute. Oh. The crystal and plug are still intact. Yoink. Okay, that's Please, good. For the love of Ram and Rom, tell me we are not going to build a third energy sensor. I hope not. I'm the exact same way. I'm not into competitive multiplayer stuff most people seem to be playing. Mm -hmm. There's also the um, MMORPGs that a lot of people are into. It's like, you know, that's great. I don't want to spend, you know, money per month to play video game. If it's free to play, sure, I get it. 
Um, but in saying that, I feel like CSGO, a game which I was kind of like into for a while there, like, I'm like, ah, oh, do I want to play this? If it's free to play, it's already like full of people using cheats and stuff. I'm like, uh, I don't know. But I do like me some CSGO occasionally. Yeah, I played Red Strings Club. I liked it a lot. It's made by my favorite indie developer, Devolver Digital Year. Speaking of Devolver, I am playing a different um, Devolver published title on Mondays. I do play um, The Eternal Castle, but I also play The Messenger. And boy, The Messenger is a very good, very good game. A bit long, but very good. A universal interface plug. Okay, that's good. I can still get the, the crystal sodium light. iodide crystal. It okay. pulses when exposed to energy. Yeah, messenger is, is still. <clears throat> so. Okay, maybe we'll get some information here. So that's the robot here, Leo Barter. Memory reader for something old and fancy. Oh, that's right. I went through his whole thing, so this should have like that. Do you like this one? <laughs> H2O chip for a geck. It's a nice Fallout reference there. Yeah, like I'm excited for my stream. Like I'm so glad that I I, I started it up, and I'm so glad that I'm at it three days a week because it means I can churn and burn through some of the bucket list games I've got going. Yeah, I've got big plans, and it's not just all PC stuff. Like uh, I I dip into the retro. In fact, like, most of my stuff prior to, say, two, three months ago was retro exclusively, so. Crowbar for something shiny, okay. Bloodboard for mask. Motor for large motor. Last finger for thumb. Okay, he's got a lot more stuff. He does have a lot more stuff, but it seems like maybe that's storyline related. And the other's just like, haha, that's a funny joke to put in the game. Horatio Nullbilt. That's not my name, no, my name is Horace. As we found out. These are coordinates to places on the map. That's right, we're in Metropole right now. This is like a, on a note. Like a note that my, my character Horatio Nullbilt, aka Horace, found in the desert. Still don't know the significance of it. I'm sure I'll find out later. Sensor plants, we've already made the sensor. And it got blown up when we entered the um, Metropole, but we took, a, we took it apart um, and we found two usable parts. So that's good. By the way, um, Nick, um, I'm not sure, but is the, um, the game's music overpowering or is it at just the right level? Sorry to use it as a guinea pig. Thank you, Nick. Um, I mean, I'm, it's, it's incremental steps, yeah? And the only way you know is if you try. Like, a lot of people get caught up in, um, what do they call it? Perfection paralysis or something? Yeah, like, they don't want to start because they feel like it's not good enough. But, um, you know, we, you've got to start somewhere. So. Fire Primordial Stewards. Okay, this is um, when I was getting the bomb from the... Uh, the other robot. Goliath, that's the big head. Yeah, we found out her name. Clock, 155. Oh, that was the time outside of the Metropole Station. I'm guessing it was frozen in place because of some event. I'm guessing an atomic bomb. I don't know. Probably. I'm still no closer to figuring out actually what to do. <clears throat> so the main thing is, I believe I need to head towards a tower with a big energy source. So yeah. Absolutely, I've been streaming for about six months now, and I'm still trying new things. I mainly do music though, but I have a few weekly game nights too. Cool, cool. You know what, Nick? After I finish my stream, like it's a bit like hectic for me to do it now, I'll give you a follow too, you know? You gotta pay it forward, you know? Especially to uh, streamers. Like, they're the ones putting themselves out there and trying to make some, like, they're trying to create new stuff for the world, so, go support that. It's all just try out, trial and error with format, really, finding out what works. Yeah, man, no rush. Well, cool. Alright. 
so we've got our little bot Crispin here, and he gives us hints, and I'm hoping he'll give us one now. Shouldn't we go find that big tower boss? Exactly, Crispin. So Leopold can just sit there for a while. Info. Yes, please. Welcome. Metromind welcomes you to her city of Metropole. This city is a safe haven for all machines. System records indicate that you have come from Outskirts Station. All, newcom eh, all newcomers are required to familiarize themselves with local laws. You may also be interested in our history and landmarks. Okay. Ooh. Hey, look, something came out of the machine. These are the laws. Printed on paper, no less. Metropolitan law. Metropolitan law is too vast for an ordinary robot to learn in full. But Metromind ensures that it is applied efficiently and fairly. Oh, shit. You s the robot, like, snatched enemy energy out of my body. So it's... Yeah, whatever. Newcomers to the city should familiarize themselves with the Corrupt Data Elimination Plan. Topic CDEP and the refuge rule, as well as the efficiency initiative. Alright, now we're getting full dystopia here, I like it. And I reckon that that robot that accosted us at the, at the start has been affected by this CDEP. So... Corrupt Data Elimination Plan. In order to protect the city from corrupt data, Metromind and the Ad Hoc Robot Council passed the CDEP under which all information relating to certain untrue subjects oh okay so this is wrong thing i like it such as the mythological man is subject to swift elimination Ooh, shit. physical media containing such data will be disposed of in the underworks quarantine zone which is why that robot grabbed our book and chucked it is that also why they zapped me could be. Can I do back? Maybe if I look for... Robot cancel. <clears throat> I'm gonna hide myself for a little. We're getting some primordial lore here. The Robot Council was an ad hoc group of machines who convened to appoint a single robot to guide the city's progress. Its president was Metromind. Other members included Factor, Arbiter, and Memorius. Once it vested sole responsibility into Metromind, the body dissolved. Okay, so... Like a singularity kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, this part's giving you Fallout vibes. I feel it's giving me Fallout vibes. Let's see if we can look for Memorius. Memorius was the database AI responsible for collating information for Metromind's use. As Metromind's own processing capability increased, Memorius shifted to a purely storage role. His motto was, see this data as I saw it. This kiosk is his only re uh, remnant. Okay. So, let's go back to Robot Cancel. Factor. A machine of enormous size and productive capacity, Factor spanned much of the underworks for being shut down to conserve power for his fellow machines. Factor was a member of the council that appointed Metromind to lead Metropole. Formerly one half of the first primordial robots in Metropole are Factor B, yeah, Factor B, Factor built models. Okay. <clears throat> Arbiter. A rather simple machine, built to resolve basic legal questions, Arbiter briefly served on the council that appointed Metromind to lead Metropole. He has not judged any cases for a long time, likely out of deference, sure, to Metromind's superior capacity to guide and apply the city's law. So I'm guessing that um, Metromind was that robot that we saw. 
That rover probably said its name. It's just that it's been a week and I've forgotten. You'll see it in the vlogs that are up on my YouTube channel. Alright, I guess we got the Metron line. Metron line. Metromind is the guide, guardian, and eponym of Metropol. Empowered by the Ad Hoc Rover Council <laughs> to steer the city towards progress and a bright future, Metromind has led with great efficiency and clear logic. She shares energy, parts, and raw materials with all robots, asking only that they share processor cycles in exchange to help advance the common good. Okay, so the robots give their energy to this Metromind. Thanks to Metromind, the city has followed an unbroken path of progress. Whatever. Let's go back to laws. Okay, so that's... I think that's gone through CDP, but let's go back to it. Okay, we did Robot Council, we did Metromind. Underworks? The underworks are closed for public safety and will be reopened once additional repairs are complete. Thank you for your patience. Alright. Refugee rule. Immediately following the primordium, Metropole enacted the refugee rule, under which any robot is welcome in the city. In fact, for the first 48 hours after a robot arrives in Metropole, it will not be punished for violations of any laws except for harming another robot or causing significant property damage. Okay, that's something to remember. The first 48 hours. Alright. That clock isn't going to help us, but 48 hours. And then I think Metropole is going to come for my ass. The purpose of this law is to provide an interrogation integration period during which newcomers can make whatever modifications are necessary to operate within metropolitan society. Mm. The efficiency initiative was enacted by Metromind Excuse me Following a period of power shortages caused by systemic failures of city planning, Metromind reorganized the city along progressive ideals, closing off entire areas and consolidating the population in the city centre. Moreover, Metromind identified and eliminated wasteful practices and inefficient robots. Okay, so mass genocide. Nice. In order to show his commitment, his commitment, oh, fact, okay, his commitment to the common good, Factor volunteered to deactivate himself. Oh, he volunteered. And many similarly obsolete robots followed suit. Okay, so this is eugenics. Nice. Since the initiative was enacted, power levels have been stable. But Metromind is always looking for progressive means of improving efficiency. So it's like a Jeff Bezos. Hmm. Alright, um. Oh. Okay, Leopold. Eh, man. Humans. A mythological creature invented to explain the existence of the first basic primordial machines. Logic has proven that progress, not man, explains the development of robots and the creation of Metropole. Alright. Ah. Uh -huh. 